from the Crusaders. They're on an 8-1 run with 50 seconds to go in the first half. But can you imagine the high that Holy Cross would be on if they make a stop here and can hold for the last shot? Again, we said Javé Mead, the key player for Holy Cross. Look at him get surrounded right here. And again, finding people on the baseline. He's the man. Back door, Tamir does not jump in front. When he doesn't, the easy lane and the nice pass, the bounce pass where only Marcus Melvin can catch it. And the wonderful finish by an outstanding player who's played a terrific first half in Marcus Melvin. We've seen that a lot this afternoon. Here's a steal by Cheryl, racing the other way for the Wolfpack. Melvin, kind of hemmed in over there by Tamir, who's out there from Uliner. And they got Eric Bond on the floor right now. Midgley remains in the contest. A.J. Diggs out there for Cal. Melvin. Rifles it inside, and a contorted shot by Cheryl won't go. On the bench with three fouls. He was ready to go back out there. Yeah, he, he thought was. he was dead. He sees his team on a roll. He wants to be a part. Mead with the steal. And gets a timeout before he falls out of bounds. Back after this. Hey, hey, Scores, highlights, live lookings all over this very first day of the NCAA tournament. Eric Bond at the free throw line for Cal. He is a free throw shooter who has only gone one of four until that right there. And he missed that. Right now, North Carolina State can hold it for the last shot of the half. The shot clock and game clock essentially identical. Julius Hodge. As Cal tries to pack in. Melvin on the outside. Crawford with the ball. Melvin's the guy you got to watch. He's hit three threes already. And Famuliner watches the ball go out of bounds and off the hands of Josh Powell, and Cal will have it for the final three seconds of the half. From that distance, Melvin probably pulled the trigger a little bit too early. Gave time for an offensive rebound, but usually those are long rebounds. And with that going out of bounds, it gives California a chance. The Bears have to be careful not to throw it too long and give NC State a chance down underneath their own basket. Lee will hold it. Boy, that's an awfully long time to hold it. Boy, it is. That was a long three seconds. And Cal, one time leading by eight, goes to halftime leading by Travels. Well, a little bit of the air was let out. On, you led wire to wire in the first. Here comes Diener. Two to shoot, a straightaway three, rims out. And that's the end of the first half. Diener with 17 points, but the All-America, Dwayne Wade, ends the first half with no points. And after leading by 12, Conference, the 12 and 18 North Carolina State Wolfpack. Greg Gumbel's on the other side of this commercial. So many Cinderella's. And Leonard Stokes for the Bearcats. Stokes with the ball. Well, Stokes will occasionally flash in there, but it doesn't appear the Bearcats are really looking to get to make a conscious effort to get him the ball inside the lane. Stokes unable to hit. Johnson gets the offensive rebound and connects. Kareem Johnson has four points. Good battle. Toriyoff wins against two Bearcat defenders. Violet left all alone underneath to score. Cincinnati's trying to accomplish too much that time with the double team. At, at certain points, you got to back off and make sure you play good defense at the basket. They, they didn't pay attention to that, and Violet was wide open under the hoop. That's why Gonzaga should go into the post more to see how Cincinnati reacts to how they're going to double team and then how they're going to plug in on the weak side. Gonzaga staying in that zone, so Field Williams fires and it rattles out. Step, 
quick release by Brooks. And it pays off. That's twice Gonzaga has beaten the Bearcats down the floor. And the game is tied at 27. Blake Stepp has great vision down the court. As soon as he gets his hands on the ball, he's looking for a, not a scoring opportunity, not necessarily for himself. Stokes denied again defensively that uh, zone bothering Leonard Stokes yet to score and he's averaging 16. Putting a little tentative there, Dick. I thought he had an open 15 footer. He's got to let it fly no matter, no matter how many he has missed in a row. Skinner clears the board. Turiak beats him down court. And that has become a theme here in the first half. Gonzaga out hustling Cincinnati for the easy goal. Cincinnati's putting too much emphasis on going to the offensive board sometimes, and it's hurting them. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our studios here in New York. At halftime, some of you watching the Marquette Golden Eagles with a five-point lead on Holy Cross. Others see the California Golden Bears with a three-point lead at halftime over North Carolina State. The third game in action right now is taking place in Salt Lake City, where the Bearcats of Cincinnati trail the Bulldogs of Gonzaga by two in first-round action in the West. Let's go there now and join Dick Emberg, Matt Gukas, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, the West Region, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs beating Bob Huggins, Cincinnati Bearcats defense down court. Three easy baskets on long passes have reclaimed the lead at 29-27. It is seesaw throughout this first half. Gonzaga's biggest lead off the top of the game, 8-0. Cincinnati led by four at 25-21, but Gonzaga currently in a 6-0 run. Cincinnati's commitment to going to the offensive board is leaving them vulnerable to someone running down the court when they're, they're staying under the, under the hoop trying to get the, get the rebound. Bobbitt with a move, can't hit. Late step inside, Aturia. Six unanswered points for Gonzaga, looking for eight, and Violet able to get his own mistake, and it's 31-27. If winner of this game meets either Arizona or Vermont, they will play next here at the home of the University of Utah Utes. Four-point lead, Gonzaga, 2.45 to go in the opening half. And a baseline violation against Cincinnati and without a timeout 242 left before halftime the Bulldogs from Spokane by four coming up a reminder Saturday first round coverage of the NCAA women's basketball championship it tips off on ESPN and ESPN 2 at 11 in the morning Alabama State Tennessee Old Dominion Boston College and then on ESPN 2 Georgia Tech Virginia or Western Kentucky and Rutgers check your local listings for the game in your area ESPN ESPN 2 ESPN full court your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA women's championship tournament the Bulldogs with the ball and in a run of eight unanswered points to open a four-point advantage. Since he has put some new bodies out there in an attempt to continue to keep the pressure on. Turia and reach in foul on number 20, Teron Barker. At least he raised his hand. It's his first foul. It's the eighth team foul on Cincinnati. Gonzaga's committed five. Roni Turiaf, a guy that really brings energy to this team, plays with enthusiasm. And his confidence level really improving from last year to this year. Last year, he scored seven a game, pulled down five rebounds. He has doubled his points, mainly because he's gotten more playing time and the injury to Corey Violet enabled him to get out on the floor. Rod Flowers returns for Cincinnati, replacing Eric Hicks. As Turiaf, who speaks five languages, and so it's no good on that one. And, and working on a six, he's taking uh, Italian. Italian. <laughs> yeah, to go with his uh, Creole, French, Spanish, and English. 
And Mark Few told us yesterday, normally his team plays man-to-man 70% -man of the time, so 30% man. I think in his first half, it's been the exact opposite. Maxiel, no basket. The foul is before the shot on Turioff. It's been three and a half minutes since the Bearcats have scored. Bit of a gamble here by Bob Huggins, trying to stay connected to Gonzaga, bringing Maxiel back for these last couple of minutes with uh, two personal fouls. He got off to a good start, did Maxiel, working in the low post. So they're just under two minutes to play in Salt Lake City. Gonzaga with a 32-27 lead. I'm sure Gonzaga coach Mark Few was happy to see his Bulldogs rebound after Cincinnati rebounded from the opening assault by Gonzaga. Well, Cincinnati got back in it because they played good, solid, smart defense in that last 8-0 run that allowed Gonzaga to regain the lead. They got a little sloppy at the defensive end, and we know they have to hang their hat on the defensive end because offensively they've been up and down. All right, these two teams uh, fighting for the right to meet the winner of the Arizona Vermont contest. Now, some of you are watching the game from Indianapolis. Holy Cross and Marquette. It's Scott Merritt dishing inside to Jackson for the layup. Then Brian Wilson going to find Tim Zatko inside. He gets the hoop and the foul. Marquette's lead was only one. Brian Wilson again inside. Patrick Wordy, who has three fouls, actually got a dunk there. But Holy Cross doing it inside, And Greg. Marquette regains the lead. Todd Townsend to Travis Diener, who's been red hot in the first half. Long range jumper. And at halftime, Marquette's Golden Eagles lead Holy Cross 29-24. With Wordy in trouble, can Holy Cross pull this off? Well, they certainly have a chance because they've been able to get it done in the paint. They need to make foul shots, so Greg. If they made free throws in the first half, they'd be on top. All right, meanwhile, in Oklahoma City, North Carolina State and California, 39-36 Cal at halftime. Joe Ship steps back, three-pointer is good. Then a meet Tamir, the big fella at 6'10", going to step back and bury a three. It was a five-point lead for the Bears. And then Josh Powell takes advantage of the overplay. One bounce to the rim. And then California will up its lead to five here. Brian Weathers. Look left, spin right, reverse layup is good, but Ship is the man with 15 at halftime, and the Golden Bears with a good showing, Clark. They have gotten off to a good start, but they've got to tighten up their defense. All right, now, we remind you, for live continuing coverage of the Iraq situation, you can turn to CBS News on your local CBS station. I want to remind you of the game still to come here on CBS Today. Number 12, BYU will play fifth seed Connecticut in the south in the Midwest. SIU and sixth seed Missouri in the east. South Carolina State will take on the top seed Oklahoma and out west the top seed Arizona will meet Vermont. Thank you for joining us here on the road to the final four second halves of your games coming right up. CBA Sports presents Singular at the half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Mike Gitz is the lead official. A technical foul perhaps for dunking after the play. It's going to be the call, and, and why Violet didn't realize that that, <laughs> I guess he was thinking pass all the way, couldn't believe himself, even though he was under the basket, <laughs> that, that that one had gone through. But uh, no foul shot, so apparently not a technical foul. Oh, the... Bulldogs back up by five as Flowers pumps and hits a two. 35-32 the score as Rod Flowers, a non-starter with eight points. Oh, nope, no respect at all for his outside shot. We're getting a word now that the officials ruled that there was no delay game, no technical. That this was a dead ball play. There's the lob to Turia by Step and a foul. As we remind you, coming up on Singular at the half, Greg Humble, Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in this NCAA tournament that's coming up on Singular at the half. The foul on Kareem Johnson, his second, so Johnson has two, Max Eel has two, and Flowers, the three big men for the Bearcats, all with two fouls. And as you look at Roni Turi up, it is obvious, if you saw him play last year as a freshman, he has gotten into the weight room. He has put on some, some muscle up in that chest and shoulder area and it has uh, done him very well here. Just having an outstanding season for uh, Gonzaga. Looking for his 10th point in this first half to lead all scores. And that gives Gonzaga a five-point lead. Bob Huggins takes out his leading scorer, Leonard Stokes. He hasn't scored, and uh, 
the Bearcats will see some changes on the defensive end made by Mark Few as Bankhead comes in. Violet is out. Step is out. Skinner and Gord defending along with Richard Fox. 20 seconds left in the half. About a three second difference between the game and shot clock. Bobbitt back outside to Barker for three. Rebound Brooks. Two seconds. And Skinner hits the three at the end of the first half. What a start. What a finish to the first 20 minutes for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They open 8 and 0, oh, and they close with a flourish. Gonzaga's uh, three-point shooting has been the decisive difference in this game. If that keeps up, Cincinnati's not going to have a chance. An 8-0 start, and they close with an eight-point lead. And they uh, scored in a variety of manners from outside the arc, including a throw that was intended to be a pass, but resulted in a three-point play. Mega 40, Cincinnati 32. Greg Gumbel will be back with Singular at the half right after this message.